it's really important to understand the parasite cycle. And that is that eggs do not hatch inside the goat, which a lot of people misunderstand. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. This episode is in direct response to questions that I get a lot, and it is one for which I have no personal experience. Luckily, we got control of parasites um, well over 10 years ago, and we keep control of parasites by rotational grazing and other management practices, but rotational grazing is not always possible for everybody. And in those cases, there is a new product on the market called BioWorma. And lots of people have asked me about that. I know if you've asked questions on Facebook or Instagram, you might've gotten a response from Tammy Gallagher. She lives down in Texas. She helps me answer questions and she has been using BioWorma and absolutely loves it so much. And so I decided to ask the wonderful people at Premier One Supplies about doing an episode on this because they are the exclusive distributor of it in the United States. And so today we are joined by Dan Moracle, who is one of the Ask an Expert specialists at Premier One Supplies, and he is a retired sheep specialist from Iowa State University, where he worked for 33 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I got the short straw, so you guys have to listen to me. Sorry. No problem. I'm really excited to have you here today, because like I said, this is a question I get a lot so many people have a problem with worms and they can't really do rotational grazing because of, you know, whatever unique aspect of their pastures or their farm or whatever. And so this is a really great option for them. But again, like I said at the beginning, it's not something I have any personal experience with. So first of all, a lot of people think, oh, it's just another drug, which it is not a drug at all. So can you tell everybody exactly what BioWorma is and how it works? So basically what bioworma is, is a fungus. And so you feed the fungus to the sheep or goat or donkey or horse or cow. The fungus survives the digestive tract and it's deposited in the feces. So as the eggs are shed in the feces and then they develop into larvae, the fungus attacks the larvae and kills the larvae. So we aren't repopulating the sheep goats, other ruminants with live larvae. So we're trying to hold down the, the relative reinfestation from the pasture. So as we think about a pasture, depending on where you're located, uh, today it's a nice balmy 10 degrees in central Iowa where I live. Uh, you would think that we wouldn't have any parasites survive the winter, but we've got a lot of snow cover on. So we may have some larvae that develop next spring from eggs that did not develop into larvae that were late in the fall and just went into hibernation. Uh, so our pastures always have some larvae out there. So if we think about goats going out in the spring, there's a relatively low level of parasitism on the pasture. But as we go through May, June, and July, we keep building up those numbers of larvae out there so the goats get hammered worse and worse and worse. And so, you know, we tend to think that the boar goats came from South Africa. They're supposed to be parasite resistant. Well, that's not really true. They don't have any worms in South Africa because it's so dry. And if goats are browsing where they normally would graze up in the trees and brush, the parasite can't get that high. So in many cases, we put goats on native pasture, short grass, right down there where all the worms are. And that's why we keep having problems with goats and reinfestation. And so when we think about bioworma, it's an actual fungus that lives in the feces that kills the larvae as they develop. So the problem we've got is if we want it to work, we've got to feed it every day. Because like we fed it once a week. Well, the poop that's got some of the fungus in it, yeah, those larvae will get killed. But the other three or four, five, six days where we don't have enough fungus, then the larvae survive, we get the goats reinfected, and then we have problems. You go, well, that bioworm, it doesn't work. Well, you, it does work if you use it judiciously every day. The real problem with bioworm to me is it's too expensive. 
And it is very expensive because it's not an easy process to get it developed, get it grown, get it harvested, get it packaged, and get it delivered to. So if I was going to try to judiciously use bioworm, I try to use it in May and June. I try to stop that pasture buildup in the spring so that the animals come July, August, maybe are a little better shape in terms of pasture contamination and don't get reinfected so bad. The other place that a lot of people have really liked Biowarma, they've got 30 nannies on two acres. Well, they've got a really dense population of goats. The pastures are highly contaminated. Doesn't make any difference if they deworm all the time, there's still gonna be worms out there because they've built up resistance. Can't get them to fresh, clean grass. So it's it works best in those really small areas where we've got a lot of contamination. And so if you think about the effectiveness of it, sheep are actually the poorest at 68% efficacy on killing the larvae. Goats are a little higher, around 70, 72. Uh, horses are actually the highest. It's not a foolproof system, but it will drastically reduce those pasture larvae loads so we have less reinfectivity. I would use it May and June. Um, you know, once we get to the point in the winter, fall, that we're not having larvae develop, especially in northern climates, we probably don't need to be using bioworma. Uh, so that will help us save someone money as well. Exactly. And for people who haven't listened to some of my other episodes on parasites, it's really important to understand the parasite cycle. And that is that eggs do not hatch inside the goat, which a lot of people misunderstand. A lot of people think that, and we've discussed that repeatedly on different episodes, um, that the eggs hatch on the pasture. And so what Biowarma is doing is that it's interrupting that life cycle. So the goat poops out the eggs. The longer they are staying on a pasture, the more eggs they're pooping out. And all of those larvae are hatching on the pasture and larva can survive for months if you've got regular rain. It's mind blowing to me how long larva can survive if you're getting a lot of rain. Their enemy is dehydration. So, you know, if you're in a drought situation, that's good in terms of worm control, not so good for your grass. But that's why the bioworma works is because it's interrupting that life cycle and reducing the number of larva on the pasture. Well, and your comment about the larvae being able to live a long time, when I want to try to have a safe pasture, for livestock, like for sheep and goats. I don't want any sheep and goats out there for six months. So that to me is July 1 to December 31st or January 1 to June 30. So that six months, then we got a chance to have a clean pasture. So we can do that by using hay ground, switching our hay ground from our grazing ground if possible. We can do it with grazing cattle on one half of our pastures and goats on the other, and then flip flopping them after six months. So that's a couple other ways we can do that. And a lot of people talk about rotational grazing. So I'm going to ask you the question. You control it with rotational grazing. So what's your rest period? It depends on which thing you're talking about. And it's funny. I hear some people go, oh, I can't do rotational grazing because we have a lot of trees and hills and stuff. So do we. And we have a creek that cuts through. I know a company that sells <laughs> fans that will work on that. Exactly. Besides bioworm. <laughs> Exactly. And so like somebody asked me the other day on Facebook, like how many pastures do you have? And I'm like, you know, I'm not really sure because we're using Electronet to create temporary pastures. And so, you know, it depends on like so many things and they're not a bunch of perfect little rectangles and they're not even geometric shapes, you know? And so one thing that we use, so, so this is my thing for my baby goats, is that baby goats do not go out on pasture until about the middle of April when the grass is finally over six inches tall. And they go out on our front yard using Electronet and nobody goes on that front yard except baby goats with their mamas every April. So there is no larva there. There has been no goat poop there for 11 months. Except for the escapees. <laughs> Luckily, that so rarely happens. And it would be like one goat, you know? Yes. Or it's one, one day or <laughs> minute. Yes. Yeah, so it's okay. All right. Yeah. So in that case, you're probably running those kids out there till August. No. The, the, so the kids are only on that front yard for two or three weeks. And then um, they go into other pastures that are now tall enough. See, the other ones are behind. The regular goat pastures are behind because 
they were grazed too short. And so it takes that grass a lot longer to regrow than the stuff on the front yard, which hasn't been touched since yes. six months. So my comment about rotational grazing is, is it helps immensely in parasite control. I think it helps way more because we provide the goats better nutrition, protein and energy so they can fight off the parasites much better. And I do a lot of grazing management stuff as well. And ideally, if you were going to try to manage the grass, we'd rotate back in at like 28 days. Well, that's right in the life cycle of the larvae. So they're at peak reinfectivity. So a short duration rotation doesn't really control the larvae as much as it just makes sure the goats got a lot to eat so they can still produce and do well. Okay, so then we get back to bioworma. One of the things that warns us about is not to feed it with medicated feed. We got to understand why this is. It's out of Australia and they don't have any medicated feeds down there. So they didn't test it with medicated feeds. So our FDA being very cautious, doesn't want them to sell it that way. Really the only thing we would worry about is if you would put it with a fungicide, medicated fungicide, cause then we'll kill the fungus and we don't get the larvae control. So, you know, our typical Bobotech, um, Rumensin, Decox, those aren't going to impact the fungus. That's really interesting um, that it's labeled that you shouldn't use it with medicated feed. Is there anything else that people need to be aware of in terms of like any kind of contraindications or, um, and at what age, like kids start nibbling on food when they're a few days old, if they're with their mom, you know, imitating yeah, her. Yeah, but getting enough intake to really treat them, probably not. Okay. But theoretically, you shouldn't have a kid with worms. Right. Till they're 21 to 28 days old. Right. Exactly. Or at least shedding eggs. Yeah. So, yeah. So we got to be careful. that way. But there's no but, danger. Like, because I know somebody's going to ask in the comment section of the show notes, like, can we feed this to kids? So yes. there's Okay. And there's no safety factor there. Okay. Yeah, because okay, like I said, if they're with their mom, they're going to start nibbling on whatever she's eating, you know, from the time they're a few days old. And as we talk about parasites, we always talk about parasites. Young animals are the least resistant. So those young kids are probably shedding the most eggs because they're not resilient and they're small and they're not used to it. So they get hammered quicker than anything. That's why we see get into that July, August time period. Then we start having kids die from parasitism because they've just built up to the point where they've eaten enough grass, they've gotten exposed to enough larvae, they're infected enough to where it get, gets them. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I love the ElectroNet and the fact that it gives me the ability to like put my kids in the front yard because um, I haven't had to deworm a kid in probably 10 years now because they're going out onto pasture that is legitimately clean and not getting a big load. People ask me a lot of times, like, at what age can you put new, you know, kids outside? And it's like, there's a lot of levels to that. And my big, uh, most important thing is even if they were born, you know, on a lovely May day when it's beautiful weather, I'm not going to put them on a pasture with a bunch of mature goats that are pooping worm eggs that are going to hatch into larvae that's going to infect that kid you know, right away. So back to Premier One's other awesome product, your temporary electric netting. To me, that's like the best option. But if people can't do rotational grazing, Bioworm is definitely a really great option too, because it's going to reduce the amount of infection. And that's why I pointed out earlier that eggs don't hatch inside the goat. It's like your goat is not going to keep worms reproducing inside of their gut endlessly because the, the worms are in the goat and then they die and then they go away and the goat doesn't get more worms until they eat larva from the pasture. And generally they percent. don't get reinfected in dry lot. Right. Yeah. You know, if your dry lot's got some grass growing along the edge, so there's places larvae can grow and develop. Yes, maybe. But generally if, if it's a manure pack, they're not getting reinfected in the dry lot. Now, in Iowa, we say dry lot, and it's a mud lot some of the year, so it's really not good. And then we get into coccidia, which is a whole different parasite. Okay, so as we think about bioworma again, we've got to get enough into them. Uh, we've got to do it continuously. Obviously, the kids are the high-risk animals. May, June is probably the time to 
for sure treat them uh, to try to prevent that midsummer buildup of parasite larvae. Exactly. The other thing we got to realize is if we've already got heavily parasitized goats, we got to get the worms out of those goats for bioworm to work because we've got to get the load down so that the goats aren't negatively impacted. They're not shedding as many eggs because our pastures are already contaminated. Uh, and as we think about deworming goats, if we have to deworm, there's some really unique work from the Small Ruminant Consortium looking at combination dewormers, copper oxide wire particles with dewormers uh, to where we can increase the efficacy of those dewormers and get a higher percent kill so that the goats are cleaner. So maybe we'd use tramazole and ibomec together. We might use valbazin and ibomec together and then give them a copper oxide wire particle on top because it tends to be synergistic and make those dewormers work better. So we get the goats cleaned out and we can use bioworm and then to maintain that lower level of parasites out on the pasture. So I'd probably uh, start two to three days before I was gonna turn out. Uh, it's just so we got the fungus going through them because the rate of passage on the goats about 48 hours. So when they hit the pasture, we want there to be fungus in the pellets uh, so we can get those larvae killed. Thank you so much. This has been really helpful. And if people that watch this, if they have questions, comments, concerns, uh, they can contact Premier at the Ask an Expert. Uh, they'll get a hold of me, send the message on to me, and then we can have a further discussion follow-up specific to their individual operations and how to try to combat parasites because they are a problem that just never goes away. Excellent. That is really awesome because as I always tell people every time, there is no one size fits all plan for parasite management or nutrition or anything because every farm is different. So it's really great that Premier One has the option for people to contact you and talk about their specific situation with using bioworma and rotational grazing and all of those um, tools that we have at our disposal now. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Glad this, it worked out. Yeah, this is going to be really helpful for people.